Hi there. We're now going to talk about a very special type of integral function called the error function. The error function is very important and it occurs very commonly in probability and statistics where we see it as part of the normal distribution or the Gaussian distribution. So how is the error function defined? We write it as ERF, so that says, you know, it's an error function, as some function of x, and what it's equal to is 2 over the square root of pi times the integral from 0 to x of e to the minus t squared dt. So this is how the error function is written, and it has this particular form. And we can note the integral and the exponent here, and we can do some analysis on this. So if we were to plot the uh, error function, it would look like the figure on the left, where we have bounds between 1 and minus 1. Those are asymptotes, and it takes the form as the red curve, as you can see. So the first question is, why is it called the error function? What does the word error have to do with anything? Well, it's called the error function because in early statistics and probability, when scientists were first investigating this, they were interested in measurement errors. So measurement errors was talking towards, you know, if we have a certain series of experiments, what is the error in, the ex in all of these experiments and what does this error accumulate to overall? And what people found is that the errors actually follow a certain distribution. And that's the distribution that you see on the right hand side, which is actually the Gaussian distribution. And when we actually now want to determine what is the probability that a certain error will fall around a certain value or in a certain range, then what we actually do is we integrate this Gaussian function and then we get the error function. And the error function then tells us the probability that a certain error will fall in, in a certain range. So the Gaussian distribution has the form of the equation 1 over the square root of 2 pi times e to the minus x squared over 2. So you can see that it's very similar to the form uh, of the error function where we have e to the minus x squared over 2 and here we have e to the minus t squared and so on. So as I just explained now, people would take the errors and then see how the errors coalesce or congregate or basically gather around certain values and how it gathers around the means specifically. So when we plot how these errors are distributed around certain values and certain ranges, we get this graph on the right hand side, this curve, and we can see that it can be described by this particular equation that I've just written, which is actually called the Gaussian distribution. So this uh, relation that I've written is called the Gaussian distribution. So if we know how the errors congregate around certain values, when we now integrate the Gaussian distribution, we get something that looks like the error function. So if I were to take, you know, we just call it phi. So we have, you know, phi of x, and I now just integrate this Gaussian distribution. So that's 1 over the square root of 2 pi multiplied by this integral now from, uh, you know, from minus infinity to some value x, it could be x here. So I'm actually just taking the area underneath this curve to some arbitrary value x here. And then e to the minus x squared over 2 dx. So if I do that, and when I do that, then what I'm actually getting is the, uh, sorry, I should just, you know, just put a dummy variable here, t, so that it just makes sense. Yeah, so in any case, when I integrate this, I can see that it looks very similar to the error function. And what this tells me is the probability that a certain value will fall in the range. So what is the probability that a measurement error will fall in a certain range? And I integrate the Gaussian distribution, and that value is the probability up until that point. So many things can be described using the Gaussian distribution, and not just errors. But the point of this was that the word error function comes from the fact that uh, we can model errors in certain ranges using the Gaussian distribution. And when we integrate that, we get the probability of a certain cumulative error falling within a certain range or around a certain value. So what we want to do is we just would like to find this area 
of this particular integral. And let's just say this x goes to infinity. So let's just find the area of this integral. But what would we expect? We know that the maximum probability in reality can be 1. There can't be any probability greater than 100% or probability of 1. So we know that if we integrate now this integral all the way to infinity, in other words, we take the area all the way to infinity here, we should find that it equals to 1. So let's just see if this actually happens. So what we're doing is we're taking now this 1 over the square root of 2 pi and we're integrating that now from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus t squared over 2 dt. What we can firstly realize is that this function is symmetrical about the y-axis. So integrating from uh, minus infinity to infinity is just the same as integrating from 0 to infinity times 2. So that's what we're going to replace it with. We're going to replace it with 2 over the square root of 2 pi times this integral now from 0 to infinity times e to the minus t squared over 2 dt. So we're just going to rationalize this denominator. So you would know that, you know, if you have 2 over root 2, and we rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root 2 over root 2. So that would give us uh, the square root cancel. So we just left with 2 in the denominator. So we have 2 over 2 times root 2. So this just gives us square root of 2. And now we have square root of 2 over pi. So that is just going to be the square root of 2 over pi times this integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus t squared over 2 dt. So this integral is not a standard integral and we just have to do a substitution here. So the substitution we'll do is that u is equal to t over the square root of 2. So u is, is, is equal to t over the square root of 2. So what that means is that du is equal to 1 over root 2 dt, and then dt is equal to the square root of 2 times du. So if we just bring that in, so then what we're going to get is now uh, we're going to have root 2 again. So we're going to have root 2 now times root 2 in this numerator here. So that's just going to give us 2. We're going to have 2 over the square root of pi times this integral from 0 to infinity. That doesn't change. And now u is equal to t over 2. So if we square this, we'll get u, u squared is equal to t squared over 2, which is what this exponent is. So this inter integral becomes e to the minus u squared dt. So this we have to evaluate some, sorry, du. So as I was saying, we have to uh, integrate this in some kind of clever way or some, using some kind of special technique because this is not a standard integral either. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to just do some more substitutions. We're going to take this integral and we're going to just call it i. And firstly, we'll just write it in terms of some arbitrary variable x. So we have e to the minus x squared dx. And we'll also write it in terms of y i is equal to integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus y squared dy. Why is this okay? Well, because it's being integrated all the way to infinity. So regardless of the variable, it's going to converge to the same value. So if we now multiply these uh, i's together, we get i squared. And then we multiply these integrals. We're going to get a double integral. Integral from 0 to infinity. Integral from 0 to infinity. And now we're multiplying these uh, e's. So it's going to be e to the minus x squared minus y squared. And then if we take out minus as a common factor, then we get minus into x squared plus y squared times dx dy, which is actually an area integral. We would recall that in the plane, we have x and y, and then we have some area integral, which is actually dx and then dy. So that's an area integral. So the technique we're going to use to evaluate this is just we're just going to substitute this in terms of polar coordinates. So we have polar coordinates. 
And you would recall that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. We need to do this because you could see that we have, you know, x squared plus y squared um, in this exponent. So we can just substitute that in, but we'll also have to account for this area integral. So this is a simple thing to do. If we just think about the plane, and we have some element like this in polar coordinates. Okay, that's not very well drawn. Okay, anyway, so that's dr and that's d theta. So this is r d theta. So this area element is essentially r dr d theta. So if we substitute that in, then what we get is that i squared is equal to now this double integral. So x was going from 0 to infinity and y was also going from 0 to infinity. So r will also go from 0 to infinity. 0 to infinity. But however, since now we're talking about 0 to infinity of both x and y, it means that everything is just in the first quadrant. And we'd know that when you're considering theta in the first quadrant, uh, coordinate, it's 0 to pi over 2. And then we have e to the minus r squared, because that's what x squared plus y squared is equal to. And this area element is r dr d theta, which we have just seen here. And now we can integrate this. This is a fairly simple uh, integral to evaluate because we have e to the minus r squared, and this r here is what makes it easy. So this is 0 to pi over 2. And now, integral of e to the minus r squared, so that will not change. But since we have an r, and the derivative of uh, r squared is 2r, and we have to find a way to cancel out that 2, we have to put 2 in the denominator. And also, there's a negative here, so we'll have to counteract that negative by putting a negative here, such that this is positive. This is integrated from 0 to infinity, and that's d theta. So when we evaluate this e to the uh, minus infinity, it's just going to be 0. Okay, we have seen that. We know that for a fact. And then e to the power 0 is actually 1, and then we have minus. So minus and a minus gives us a plus. So we're just left with half. So we're integrating from 0 to infinity, sorry, 0 to pi over 2, of just half d theta. So this is just, we're just going to just put in pi over 2. So that means that this is pi over 4. And that's what i squared is equal to. So that means that i, take the square root, is just the square root of pi over 2. That's what it is. So let's go back up now. Let's just remember that this result. This integral, this integral, which we want to evaluate, okay, is equal to square root of pi over 2. So this part in the square brackets is equal to the square root of pi over 2. So let's put that in. So we have 2 over the square root of pi, so that's this term in front, and now it's being multiplied by this integral here, and that we had seen was square root of pi over 2. So we put that in, square root of pi over 2, and of course, it just cancels out, so we are left with 1. So this entire integral, when we evaluate, it becomes 1. So this is just equal to 1. And we said that this is what we expect. We expect this because when we integrate this entire Gaussian distribution, we said it's the probability of uh, finding a, uh, you know, an error or some value in a certain range or whatever it is the case. And when we integrate this from minus infinity, since it is a probability, the maximum probability we can always get is 1. Therefore, this integral sh should always be equal to 1 if we evaluate it to infinity. So that's the expected result. So the purpose of this video was to show you what the error function is, what, it's, what it looks like, and the context in which it's used, uh, particularly in this video, is that of the Gaussian distribution. And then we, we have, sh have seen that uh, it actually is of the form of the error function when we integrate it to find the probability of a certain value occurring. So thank you very much for watching.